Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Emerson and I'm a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. In several of my videos lately, I have shared about a website called Wheel of Names that has been a total game changer for me this year while I was teaching virtually and while I've been teaching hybrid. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you all a brief tutorial of how to use Wheel of Names and I'm gonna give you some ideas of ways to use Wheel of Names in your classroom right away. So first of all, what is Wheel of Names? Wheel of Names is a free website that allows you to create virtual wheels that you can then spin. I'm going to link it for you down in the description box, but you can also access it just by going to wheelofnames.com. Once you open it up, it's going to look something like this. They always have this little sample wheel with random names. The first thing I always do is close out the ad on the side. As I mentioned, it is a free website. So yes, there are some ads, but you can easily just exit out and it goes away. Now, the first thing you want to do is actually create an account. While you do not need an account to actually access Wheel of Names, it is helpful because an account allows you to save the wheels that you have created. If you do not log into an account, then every time you open up the website, you are starting fresh. So in order to create an account, I'm gonna click on open and it's going to prompt me to either sign in with Google, sign in with Twitter, or sign in with email. Personally, I love to always sign in with Google because it's less sign-ins that I have to remember. So I'm gonna choose sign in with Google. So I'm going to select my Google account and it's going to sign me in. Now, you will notice I already have some sample wheels that I've kind of created. So for now, I'm just going to close out of that but I now have the ability to create and save wheels that will be linked to my Google account. So in order to create a wheel, all I need to do is edit the text that's in the rectangle on the side. So one of the ways that I love to be able to use Wheel of Names is a student roster. So I will put all of my students' names on a wheel and I can use it in order to pick a student. So I'm just going to select these names and backspace them and I'm gonna start typing in names. So for example, Michelle, Billy, Bridget, Trent, which is her husband, Ian, her son, Blaine, her other son, we'll do Luna and we'll do Zora. So in order to spin the wheel, all I need to do is click or press control plus enter. It's going to spin the wheel and randomly select one of those names. Another feature I did wanna point out to you is the results tab. So this wheel picked Zora. Now I have the option to remove Zora from the wheel or just close it. We'll come back to that later. For now, I'm just going to close. But if I click on results, I can now see that Zora was picked first. So if you ever accidentally spin again and you didn't see who it was that got picked or you get distracted, you can always go back to that results tab and see a list of who was picked. But one of the best features of Wheel of Names is the fact that you can customize these wheels to be exactly what you want and need. So in order to customize it, I'm just gonna click on customize up at the top and you will notice there are some different headings. So during the spin, after the spin, colors and image. Now let's start with during the spin. There is a ticking sound by default. What's that noise? If you would rather it not make the ticking sound, you can click and choose no sound. You also can select through all of these different sounds. There are tons of them. If you want to preview a sound, you can select it, for example, game show music, and you can press the play button and the stop button in order to get a sample. Personally, I don't mind the ticking sound, so that's usually what I leave it on. You can check to allow duplicates on the wheel. For example, if you have more than one student with the same name, you would wanna make sure that that is selected and you can choose to have it spin slowly. Usually when I'm using this in the classroom, time is of the essence, so I do not want it to spin slowly. You also can select the actual spin time. So I like to have it spin for only five seconds. I feel like it's a good amount of time. I don't feel like it drags on too long, but my students still get to see it spin and kind of anticipate who is going to get picked. You also can alter the maximum number of names visible on the wheel down here. I'll be honest, I typically do not adjust that because I've never really needed to have more than 500 names. Now I'm gonna select after the spin. 
So once again, there is an automatic sound effect of subdued applause. And personally, I find it very obnoxious. So I always select no sound for the after spin sound, but you can play around with the sounds and choose the one that you like. You can animate the winning entry. You can launch confetti, which who doesn't want confetti? So I always leave that one selected. You can have it auto remove the winner after five seconds. So without you having to remove them from the wheel, you can have it automatically take them off after waiting five seconds or you can have it display the pop-up message which is what I prefer depending on what I'm using the wheel for I may want to remove the student or I may not and again we'll come back to that so I do have it display the remove button and you can select the message that you want it to display so for example you could just put student and then it would list the student's name you can also have it play a click sound when the winner is removed that is totally up to you the next section, which I personally love, is getting to customize the colors. I just love the colors. By default, it has these primary colors, which I am not a huge fan of primary colors. So I do like to customize it with my own color preferences. There are categories, so you can look through already kind of curated color combinations, or you can actually fully customize the colors using RGB codes. Now you all know I love my rainbow colors. Usually I share the hex code with you all. So today I'm gonna share the RGB codes with you so that you know exactly how to get those colors and I will leave them for you in the description box. So we're going to start with the color pink because it will put the names in the order of the colors in the order that you have them. What's she talking about? So I'm gonna make sure the first one is pink, the second one is orange, and so on. Okay, so for the pink, red is 255, green is 47, and blue is 146. Next, I'm going to do orange. So the red is 255, green is 147, and blue is zero. For the yellow, Red is 255, green is 251, and then blue is zero. The green color is 142 red, 250 green, and zero blue. The blue color is zero red, <laughs> 150 green, and 255 blue. That's a lot of numbers. <laughs> and then finally, the purple is 148 red, 55 green and 255 blue. So now I have the exact colors that I personally like and I always keep the background color just as white, but again, you can customize that if needed. The final section is an image. So you can choose to upload an image in the center of the wheel. Usually I don't really bother with this, but if you have a lot of time on your hands, you can totally customize it. So you can choose from a gallery of pictures they already have, or you can choose custom, which will allow you to upload a picture from your computer. And then you can choose the image size. So either extra small, all the way up to extra, extra large. Once you have your settings exactly how you want them, just click okay, and it will update the wheel. Now you will notice that currently it is only displaying the pink, orange, yellow, and green color. So I'm gonna go back to custom and this was totally my bad. I forgot to go back and click the check boxes next to the blue and the purple. So if that ever happens to you, double check that they are all checked off. And I'm gonna click okay, and it has now updated again. So now that I've created my wheel, I have it exactly the way that I want it. I need to save it so that I can access it again and again. So I'm gonna click the save button and I'm going to give my wheel a name. So because this is my roster, I could call it class names. And if you're ever trying to overwrite a wheel, so for example, if I've made a change to a wheel and I want to resave it, you could select from your existing wheels and then just save over top of it to overwrite it. But I'm going to create a new, new one called class names and I'm going to click save. So now that I've created this wheel, if I'm wanting to now create another one, for example, if I have a second class that I wanna create a wheel for, I can just click on new, and it's going to restore all of those default settings, so I would just go through and repeat this process. Now I'm gonna go back and reopen that wheel with the class names that I just created, so I'm clicking open, and then choosing open next to class names. Just to show you how that remove button works, if I spin the wheel, and it selects Bridget. 
This time, instead of clicking close, I'm going to select remove. That's going to take her off of the wheel. And you will notice if I go under entries, her name is no longer listed. Now it's gone, gone forever. It's not gone forever. It's just gone for now while I'm using the wheel. Oh, thank God. So if I do not want it to pick the same students again and again, like each student gets one chance to be picked, I would remove each student after they have been selected. But if I want to ever restore the original wheel with all the names the way I had it, I can just go back to open. I can choose class names and it is now reset. So as you're using the wheel, if you're removing students, don't worry, your original wheel is still saved. Now, before we jump into ways to use this in your classroom, I do wanna share just a few other features. The first one is the share feature. So this will actually generate a shareable link. So I'm gonna click on continue. And you can choose the settings. You can either allow the person with the link to only spin the wheel, meaning they cannot go in and make any changes. They're just going to be able to spin it. Or you can allow them to spin it and edit their own copy of the wheel. So some of the ideas I'm going to give you for ways to use this in your classroom involve sharing the wheel with students. Whenever I share it with students, I only allow them to spin the wheel. So I'm gonna keep that first setting and I'm going to select continue. And it's going to give me a link that I now could share out to students by posting on Google Classroom or sharing it on Google Meet in the chat. Just to show you what it would look like when students open it up, I'm going to select copy link. And I'm now in a new tab, so I'm going to paste the link and go there. And you will notice it has pulled up the wheel in a full screen and they cannot edit it whatsoever. They do have the option to create their own by clicking up in the top corner. And some of my students actually like creating their own wheels, what they use them for. I have no idea. You don't wanna know. But to each their own. All they can do is click and be able to spin the wheel. And again, because I have that setting that allows them to remove, they can click to remove that person. And I'm gonna come back to that later on when I share some ideas for using this in the classroom. Two other quick features, one being dark mode. It's just going to give you a black background. It's not that exciting, but if you're looking at a screen all day and you would prefer not to have it bright and white, you can select dark mode. There also is the full screen button, which does exactly what it says it puts it into full screen. I really like to use this just to maximize my space, especially if I am sharing my screen on Google Meet. I will share it and make it full screen so that it makes it as large as possible. So now I'm gonna share five different ways that you can use Wheel of Names in your classroom. Idea number one is virtual equity sticks. So if you're not familiar with equity sticks, it would essentially be like a jar or a cup with popsicle sticks that have every student's name on them and you would use it to select students to answer questions or participate. So they're called equity sticks because it allows you to call on students equitably. Now, Wheel of Names is a perfect way to call on students because it takes all the accountability off of you. You're like, I didn't pick you, the wheel picked you. <laughs> it's not my fault. Now, in a virtual environment, I created a wheel for each one of my classes. And when we were in the middle of, let's say, a Nearpod lesson, and I'm sharing the Nearpod, all I would do was share this tab instead. I would spin the wheel and it would select the student that had to share or the student that would answer the question. Now, I already mentioned that you can create multiple wheels. So this is perfect for that virtual learning or hybrid learning environment. If you have multiple classes or multiple groups of students, whether that's different cohorts, like maybe I have a cohort of students that come Monday, Tuesday, and another cohort that come Thursday, Friday, or I have a group of students who are in person and a group of students students who are virtual. I can have separate wheels for each group of students. Then I have the ability to bounce back and forth between the wheels as needed. So for example, I have in-person learners and virtual learners. So I actually have one wheel that has all of their names together, but I also have one wheel for my in-person learners and one wheel for my virtual learners. So I will alternate spinning those wheels. So I'll call on an in-person learner and then I'll call on a virtual learner and it just helps keep it equitable so that I'm engaging both groups of students. One of the few downsides of Wheel of Names is that you cannot display more than one wheel at once in a single tab. But a little workaround is that you can have multiple tabs open. So I could open up one for my in-person learners and one for my virtual learners. So right now I have that class list opened up. I could open a new tab. 
I'm gonna go to Wheel of Names and it already has me logged in, which is really nice. I can now click open and I could choose my other list of names. So I have this other little set that just says names. I can click open. I'm gonna go ahead and close out that ad. So now I have one tab with that first group of students and one tab with the second group of students. So I can have those multiple tabs and just easily bounce back and forth. Now, a really fun feature of Wheel of Names is that you can actually add images instead of just text. So I can click on add image over on the right hand side. It's going to open up the files on my computer. So instead of putting student names, I could actually put in pictures of them. So I'm gonna use my picture as an example. When I click open, it will place my image right on the wheel. Now you'll notice it lists it down at the bottom. So you can have a combination of names and pictures all names or all pictures. It's totally up to you, but it is a way to make it just that much more fun. I'm gonna go ahead and delete my picture just so I don't have to stare at it this entire time. But the second way you could use this in your classroom is to have it select math problems or even numbers to use as examples. So I'm gonna create a new wheel. And again, I'm gonna delete these names. Let's say my students are practicing multiplying whole numbers and fractions. I could create one wheel that had an assortment of whole numbers. So I could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Of course, I can edit those based on the difficulty. So this is a great way to differentiate. You could create separate wheels for different groups of students with different levels of difficulty. Then I could create another wheel. So I'm just gonna go up to that other tab. I'm gonna select a new wheel and I could put fractions on this wheel. So I could do one half, two thirds, I could do one fourth, two fifths, three sixths, I could do four eighths, so on and so forth. I can add in all of those fractions. I mentioned that you can share out a link. So you could go to share, click continue, allow them to only spin the wheel, and you could share out this link with students either on Google Classroom, in Google Meet. Then as students are practicing math problems, you could give them a link to both wheels. So they have to spin the first wheel to get their whole number and they spin the second wheel to get their fraction. It makes it that much more exciting. So instead of giving them a worksheet or giving them a set of Google Slides with problems to practice, you're making it that much more engaging for students because they get to spin a wheel in order to pick what number or what fraction they're multiplying. Now again, because you can insert images, you could always add in pictures of models or you could add in like base 10 blocks. You can adapt this to fit any different math skill that you're working on. And it's just going to make it that much more fun for students. And as you see, you can have it made within a matter of seconds. The third idea for using this in your classroom is to have it select a character from a book or even a chapter from a book. So for example, if I was reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with my class, I don't know, that was the first book that came to mind. Bring in the chocolate. I could type a list of character names. So I could do Charlie Bucket, um, Charlie's grandpa, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. I could do Willy Wonka and so on and so forth. Then I could have students spin the wheel. Again, I can share out that link and whatever character gets picked, maybe they have to do a character analysis or they're coming up with different character traits. It's just a way, again, to make it that much more engaging. The fourth idea for using this in your classroom is to have it select a writing prompt for students. Now, I actually have a product in my store with monthly writing prompts for every month of the year. So every month there is a set of 20 writing prompts, which is great because then you don't have to think about it. If you're interested in this product, I will link it for you in the description box. I wanna show you how to adapt this to be used virtually with students using Wheel of Names. So personally, even having the prompts ready to go is great, but I don't feel like retyping them all into Wheel of Names. So within my writing prompts product, there is a PDF of the cover and writing pages, a PDF of the writing prompts, and then there is an editable PowerPoint. So if you open up the PowerPoint, the text from all of those prompts is already right there, so you can just copy and paste. So for example, I could take this prompt right here, I can copy the text, I can go back to Wheel of Names, I'm gonna delete these, and I can paste that writing prompt there. So I can repeat this process for all the different writing prompts. I'm just gonna paste a few in. 
Okay, so now I have some writing prompts on the wheel. Again, I can share the link out to students. They can spin it and it will select a writing prompt for them to respond to. You'll notice on the wheel, the text is kind of cut off. It shows dot, dot, dot. But if I actually spin the wheel, once it pops up, students will be able to see the full writing prompt. There's that applause again. That's why I said to turn it off. It is highly annoying. It says, what does April showers bring May flowers mean to you? So they can respond. Again, because you can save the wheels, you could even spend time over the summer copying and pasting them all into the wheels. Then when the school year starts, your writing prompts for the entire year are ready to go, which they're a great early finisher for students, or you can use it during your writing block. You can use it as morning work. Like there are so many options. And even when school goes back to quote unquote normal and we are no longer doing everything digitally, this is still a tool that you could use with students or even with just your whole class. So you could have one wheel and spin it for the entire class and then the students all respond to the same prompt. The fifth and final idea for using Wheel of Names in your classroom is to link it to a Google spreadsheet. And this can be used for a few different things, but let me first show you how to link it to a spreadsheet. I'm just going to create a new wheel and I'm gonna click more and select link Google spreadsheet. It's going to ask me to sign in with Google again, which I'm going to do. It's going to ask permission to access my Google Drive. So I'm going to select allow and I'm going to allow it to view my Google spreadsheets. Again, I'm gonna click allow. And it is now going to pull up all of my recently used Google spreadsheets. I'm gonna use this field trip one as an example, and I'm going to select, select. <laughs> now, this is a great way to pick, for example, chaperones for a field trip. Typically, I send out a Google form to parents to fill out if they are interested in chaperoning a field trip. And then I always feel bad when I have to only pick like two or three parents because I try to do it equitably, but I would rather just have the wheel pick it for me. So once you select the spreadsheet, you're going to select which tab. So if you have multiple sheets on the spreadsheet, you wanna select which one. Personally, this one only has one sheet, so that is good to go. Then I'm going to select the column that I want to import. So I'm gonna show you this Google Sheet. Right now, they are all just in this column, so I can go ahead and select that column. If that column has a name such as like parent name, you would just want to select the correct one. So that one is good. I can then either select or deselect this option. Is the first row a header and should not be imported? In this case, it is not a header because I just have the names listed. So I'm going to deselect it and choose link sheet. It now has taken those names that were on the Google Sheet and automatically imported them into Wheel of Names. So without any extra effort, I can take all the information I collected through a Google form and I can now import it into the Wheel of Names and I could spin it in order to select a chaperone. So that is it. That is my my basic tutorial for using Wheel of Names and five ideas for using it right away in your own classroom. I really hope this video was helpful for you. And if it was, please give it a thumbs up, share it out with your teacher friends who might also enjoy it. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.